Hey church, so glad that you could join us today for this special online service. We hope that you had a great Christmas with your family and with your friends. This morning, we're gonna hear a message from our founding pastor, Pastor Tom Schrader. And while this message was given years ago, the heart behind it is so relevant for us today. It displays and conveys the heart that we wanna have in us as a church. So really excited for you to hear from Tom today. One last thing, if Redemption Gilbert is home for you and you'd like to make a year-end contribution to the work that God is doing in and through this church, uh, you can give directly through the link that's in the description or if you simply snap a picture of the QR code on the screen, it'll take you directly there. Or if you prefer to give in person, you can always arrange for that at the church office. Now let's get our hearts ready to hear from God through a time of worship and singing together.
The, uh, the Christmas story, as I said to you at the beginning, in uh, both Scripture and music. And what I want to do is just to uh, give you something to think about. I uh, ran into a guy from the church the other day, and he, and he didn't tell me what service he was going to, to come to, but he said, I'm going to be at one of the services, and I'm bringing a friend, and I, and I wish you'd just give us something to talk about uh, at dinner. I said, well, I can do that. Maybe a kind of an exciting dinner even, so we can do that. I, last June or July, and this happens rarely, this is our uh, 15th, 16th Christmas, doing this, and uh, it's, it's oftentimes a tough time because you're telling the story, what is it, but in July, June or July, I, I knew exactly what I wanted to talk about at Christmas. Um, Braden, who you met, that was kind of weird. I was standing over there, and you know, I, I, I was thinking, if I'd have been here, and a guy would have done that. I would have said that was really cheesy. So if, if you thought that was cheesy, I apologize to that. It was just kind of weird to see him there. He introduced me to this guy, this guy right here. And this guy's become a new friend of mine. You know who that is? Elmo. Everybody knows Elmo, huh? I'm going to tell you a whole bunch about Elmo because I watched Braden with Elmo, and I saw something special going on there. And then this Elmo talks. And when he spoke, I knew I had a, a Christmas message. Let me tell you what I've discovered about Elmo. Elmo was actually introduced in 1972, and his name was not Elmo then, it was Baby Monster, which seems like a, not exactly the term you'd use to, to try to say, oh, here's a cute little cuddly thing, Baby Monster. And then he became Elmo in 1985. Elmo actually has a birth date. Does anybody know what that is? February 3rd. He is two and a half years old. And uh, we'll be forever. That's the plan. His uh, best friend is Zoe and Grover. What, and his favorite color is? That's pretty easy. His fav what's his favorite food? Pizza. He has a pet. Who's his pet? Dorothy the goldfish. That's exactly right. Very good. Let me tell you some other things. You can hear by the, the voices that the kids know him well. In a recent study... Uh, done among children, I think it was 10 and under, uh, Elmo was as recognizable as uh, uh, Santa Claus and more popular than Mickey Mouse. He's so popular that he has his own 15-minute segment on Sesame Street every day. What's that called? Elmo's World. That voice was a little deep for this. I'm a little worried about that. <laughs> Elmo's World. A little alarming. 
He's uh, been featured in two movies, Elmo and Grouchland and Elmo Saves Christmas. He is the first and only Sesame Street character that was designed and targeted to reach kids three years of age and younger. Uh, and he has been an extraordinary success. He has been on all sorts of talk shows. He, he was uh, on an episode of West Wing. He, Elmo, actually, and this somehow seems poetic, testified before Congress, which I think is interesting. Uh, and this is the kind of stuff that interests me. Elmo generates over 65% of all the revenues uh, generated by the Sesame Street brand. He's extraordinarily popular. When I first saw Elmo and he spoke, here's, here's what he said. Elmo loves you. And I found myself... Sit there, buddy. I found myself, he's going to say goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I found myself saying, oh, how, how did they decide to say that? Was that by accident? So Karen, and I don't know what service Karen's coming to, but she did some great work for me. Uh, uh, she, uh, Fisher Price is the one who controls the, the marketing of, of these um, uh, Sesame Street items. If you get a site plan of their, of their corporate headquarters, you'll see a corporate offices, manufacturing, you'll see a building out in the corner, and it's their play lab testing. Every product, and they, and they, they brought this to the industry, every product that, that Fisher Price produces is never released until the prototype is tested for design, for safety, but also for where the kids connect with it. They want to play with it. And when they tested Elmo, and they started testing the different things, when they, when they said, Elmo loves me, they said it's the most immediate, positive, energetic reaction we've ever had from kids. They began to throw their arms around his neck. They snuggled his face. They talked to him with their eyes closed. They sighed. They laughed. They kissed him. And I suspected something was up when I heard him say that. When I, when I heard him say, Elmo loves me, I lo Elmo loves you, I thought, that, that, that is an extraordinary thing. What are you trying to say? And then I didn't realize, to somebody three years of age and, and younger. Well, let me, let me push it again for you, and then push it twice. So it goes this. And so when I heard that the first time, I never really got, I thought, what a weird thing to say, Elmo loves you more. But, but play with me, what's going on there? Elmo loves you, what's Elmo hearing? I love you, Elmo. Elmo loves you more. What in the world does this have to do with Christmas? I, I'll tell you exactly. At, at some level, I think virtually every person has some understanding of the Christmas story. God became man. And, and the Christmas, the birth, is the beginning of his life and then death and resurrection. But if I would say to you, why did Jesus come and why was he born? Almost everyone, especially East Valley people or hardcore doctrinally sound people, we would say this, well, he came to save sinners like you and me. That's why he came. And that's right. I mean, that's, what, that's what the angel tells Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Uh, uh, she will have a son. His name is Jesus. He will save his people from their sin. That is his mission. But what I thought was, was, was at least in my mind, when I heard this this summer, it just, it, my mind just exploded with not Jesus' mission, but Jesus' motive. Why did he come? Not mission. He came to save us. But why? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Kevin Clash, who is the creator and voice of Elmo, uh, writes this. He thinks he's written a book. A mem Elmo has a memoir, which is disturbing to me. Why is this little furry foam bundle of energy such a phenomenon? I have an answer. It's one word. Love. 
Elmo connects, now listen, with children and adults on the purest and most fundamental level, and that's the human desire to love and to be loved. I want to know that I'm loved. I don't know about you, but having this morning off was pretty cool. It was great. And we kind of got up slow and watched a little TV. And, and on Sunday morning, they had a 10 or 15-minute segment special on James Taylor. And James Taylor was talking about his life and a bunch of things. And all of a sudden, he said something. I said to Susan, oh, my gosh, rewind it, hit serve, something, get it back there. I, want, I need that quote. And here's what James Taylor said this morning. Unconditional love on a daily basis can melt a rock. He was talking about how do people change? Unconditional love on a daily basis can melt a rock. And I thought, how perfect to tie me that into Elmo. What does a kid three years of age and younger, what does he respond to more than anything else? Elmo loves you. Unconditional love is a powerful tool. Now, here's the problem. Dave Roper writes this. The most perfect human love cannot satisfy us. Why? Well, it's never unconditional. I can't love you unconditionally. The most perfect human love cannot satisfy us. That's because our human hearts crave for a relationship deeper and more lasting than it's possible in this world. We were made for God's love, and without it, we sink into loneliness. So here's the message. What is God saying to you and me at Christmas? Here's what he's saying. I love you. I love you. Now, you may be cynical, jaded, you say, you know what, prove it. I, I didn't, first hour I didn't talk about it, but for whatever, last hour it, it came to my mind. I remember the first time a girl ever said to me, I love you. And I thought, what are you after? <laughs> I, you know, here's what I got. I, 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 I'm all done. I don't know what to say. I didn't thank you or I love you too, but I didn't. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I didn't know. But I just knew that when she said it, and I, I can tell you exactly where I was standing. I can, I can take, I could drive you right to that spot. I even remember when she said, Tom, I love you. I thought, uh, I, 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 I feel different now. And as I've gotten older, I have said to people, I love you. And they've said to me, I love you. And and then I've also sat with couples that say, well, I, I love her. Well, he doesn't show me he loves me. Well, I love her. Well, then prove it. So here you go. God says, I love you. And you say, you know what? God, prove it. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. God demonstrated. God proved his love for his own people. God demonstrated his love for us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So it's slightly different, again, by the gospel writer John in 1 John 3, 16. We know love by this. And this, this, this is love, that he laid down his life for us. That's the story that you find in all of the history of mankind. Beginning in Genesis, man sins, and immediately God prophesies that he will send a, a virgin, the offspring of which will be the Savior of the world. That's the story that God's told us over and over again from, from the very origin of man all the way through till today. God loves you. Prove it. Okay. He sent his son to live and to die. Uh, uh, Friday uh, afternoon, Haley and I went to the Nutcracker. We, do, we go every year. And uh, we went, and then Sarah and I do something different. And last night, we have this restaurant we like to go to, and we like the piano player, so we were going to go down to listen to her. And before, hey, uh, Sarah likes to look at lights and stuff. So we went right over here to Arizona, or just kind of west of Arizona Avenue on Guadalupe there. You know the street, just down a few, and then you get out and you walk around a little bit. And I did not know. I think it's Roger Ball's house, who's the pastor at First Baptist. And I didn't know that at the time. But it makes total sense. But one of the houses you walk, it was a walk through Bethlehem. And you go in the backyard, and you walk through this, and there's the, you know, the angels appear, and, uh, Joseph and Mary and shepherds, and there's the, and then all of a sudden, here you get to the nativity scene. I'm fast-forwarding through it. And, and the baby's born. But what is really cool, and this is, when I said this, saw this, I said to Susan, or to Sarah, this guy gets it. We walked right around the corner, and you came right around the corner from that nativity scene, and there were three crosses. 
And right around the corner from that was an empty tomb. That's the story, is that Jesus came and lived and died for a purpose. What's his purpose? To save us. I want to challenge you just a bit. I heard it again the other day, and it, it kind of bugs me just a little, but it's just me, so cut me slack. I, I, the, the reason for this season is giving. You know, we're here to give. No, no, no. The reason for Christmas is very simple. It's to receive. You should get a gift. That's what Christmas is all about, right? Sure it is. Not, not perhaps the gifts you're thinking. Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the wage of sin is death. In other words, what we earn by our sin. We're all sinners. That's what Paul says in Romans 3, uh, 23. We've all sinned. And if you say, ah, no, show me no favors. Just give me what I deserve. He said, here's what you deserve. You deserve death, separation from God. What you've earned by your sin is separation from God. The wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Said by Paul in Ephesians 2, 8, slightly different, same idea. For by grace you've been saved through faith, that not of yourself. It's a gift of God. So I would implore you to receive the gift that God has sent at Christmas. It's not found in religion. It's not found in some church. That uh, gentleman who said, I'm bringing a friend, give us something to talk about at dinner. I'll give you, here you go. Here's something to talk about. Who's Jesus? Am I a sinner? What has my sin done? What's the remedy for that sin? Is there anything I can do? And the whole answer to that is no. That's why Jesus came. Jesus came and lived and died and rose from the dead as evidence that he'd accomplished his mission. His mission to save his people from his sin, his motive is that God loves you. I knew when, I, when the minute I heard him say, Elmo loves you, I thought there's got to be something there. Why is that? That's a, that's a powerful, powerful idea. And it demonstrates in the human heart the, 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 the desperation we have to sense that somebody loves us. And that if somebody loved you unconditionally, it could melt a rock. Well, no one can love you unconditionally except for God except for Jesus. Here you go. And some of you, some of you, that's all brand new stuff. And what we say is talk to the person who invited you here tonight. Ask them what it means. Call us at the church. Let this be the beginning of unpacking and understanding this spiritual truth. But some of you have been around this a while, haven't you? And you know that gospel, and you've already heard this. Let me tell you something. It's really kind of cool, and maybe you need to hear it. I need to hear this every once in a while, and I seem to need to hear it more and more. Here you go. God loves you. And you may say, you know what? I love you, God. He goes, I love you more. No matter how much you love me, Tom, I love you more. With a perfect, unconditional love. That's the whole deal of Christmas. That's the whole point of that story. Why did he come here? To die for our sin. His motive is God loves you. You're going to have a a wonderful, hopefully, couple of days. And and in in the next few hours, ribbon is flying and paper's flying. Some of you have to do a little shopping first, but ribbon's flying, (laughs) paper's flying, and stuff's going on. But let me tell you, let me tell you, the single greatest gift you can receive at Christmas or any other time in your life is the gift of eternal life in Christ Jesus. Let's pray God applies that to our heart. Father, thank you for this wonderful truth. God, I thank you for Elmo. I thank you that he just expresses how desperately we need to know that that we can be loved. And God, our love is imperfect. Our love is conditional. But God, you love us. Prove that you did, Jesus on the cross. Thank you for becoming flesh, dying, so that we could have eternal life. God, I pray to you in Christ's name, amen. Thanks again for joining us online today. We're going to be back together in person Sunday, January 2nd at 9 and 1030 a.m. So excited for what God has in store for us in the new year. God bless.